Well, and in a new interview, Attorney General Bill, Attorney General Barr today accuses Democrats of trying to create a, quote, public spectacle by subpoenaing former special counsel Robert Mueller to testify before Congress. Speaking to the Associated Press, Barr confirms he will support Mueller if he decides he does not want to appear. A House Judiciary hearing with Mueller is scheduled for July 17th. Joining me now is Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. Good to see you, Tom. You. Uh, I'm wondering if Mueller wants to testify and if he will be forced to. It doesn't sound like Attorney General Barr is going to force him to if he doesn't want to. Uh, no, I mean, typically someone like Mueller would not be subject to testi testimony uh, because he's an advisor to the attorney general. And, you know, you typically ask the attorney general sure. about uh, Justice Department activities. Although, frankly, uh, Mr. Mueller needs to be asked some questions about his misconduct as, uh, a, as special counsel, uh, his hiding, for instance, of the fact that he had to let go of Strzok and Page because of anti-Trump animus uh, that uh, he hid from us, the American people, for at least four months, his decision to hire a bunch of anti-Trump uh, donors to Hillary Clinton and uh, obvious partisans, and uh, his decision-making about what he knew and when about his failure to find any Russia collusion. Why did he sit on that for as long as he did? Did, he, did the elections come into play mm -hmm. uh, in keeping it from the American people? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mueller may not want to testify, not for the reasons we're hearing about, but because uh, he would be subject to the scrutiny that's long overdue of his investigation. And then there is what he didn't investigate, which a lot of us want answers to, and which is, is involving a whole lot of investigators now, and primary among them as, as issues come up, and I'm sure it's not going to be the first time this happens over the next few months, is, is the question of the State Department official who interviewed Mr. Steele, the man behind the Trump dossier, a couple of weeks before the, the FBI FISA warrant went out. The State Department official, who was an Obama official, uh, no friend of Donald Trump's, that's for sure, uh, was upset by the fact that Mr. Steele was saying things that weren't true, uh, apparently tried to warn some people at the FBI, and they went ahead with a FISA warrant anyway based on the Steele information. Yeah, that didn't make it into his report, did no, it? No, it didn't. You know, and, and the dossier, rather than being used by Mueller to target Trump, which what it, what it was, should have been investigated by Mr. Mueller, if indeed he was interested in Russian interference in the election, because that was the vehicle. Russia misinformation, uh, working happily with the FBI and DOJ of President Obama, and frankly, some of uh, the Trump administration, the deep staters there, uh, laundering it through the dossier to justify spying on the president. Uh, why didn't he investigate that? The only mention of the dossier directly in the Mueller report, as best I could say, see, he says it's unverified. Right. It, it, it's the cornerstone of the Russia interference, the real Russia interference in the campaign, and it's still uh, uh, having an echo because we're going to have, again, the Democrats raising it, and Mueller having to talk about it in a week or so. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to switch gears a little bit to immigration, which is uh, the topic du jour. Uh, you folks have, have done some digging and, and found out some dirty little secrets about the Obama administration's record on immigration. Uh, share it with us if you can. Yeah, and we've long had records from the Obama administration <laughs> showing reports of abuse by officials in the, or, you know, people who were handling the uh, UACs, the unaccompanied minors and people like that. Uh, it was a list of horribles. Uh, first of all, they were obviously abused on the way up here. Uh, the criminals were making their way in under the Obama administration. And then, of course, once we had to provide them humanitarian assistance, several were complaining about abuse they were suffering at the hands of uh, people paid by the Obama administration to take care of them. Uh, if this had been a list of uh, Trump administration offenses, it'd be front page news everywhere. So what you hear about the Trump administration, which in many ways is unverified, we have verified in government documents about the Obama administration in terms of abuse yeah. uh, and, and uh, uh, the crisis, humanitarian crisis caused by the open borders under Obama. Tom, we only have about 45 seconds, but I've got to ask you about this uh, Cuomo bill uh, that essentially gives the right to reveal New York State tax information from Donald Trump 
uh, with the rest of the world. What, what do you make of this? It's third world. It's a third world style attack yeah. on the rule of law, uh, targeting President Trump. It's more harassment of President Trump. It never ends. In my view, the census uh, judicial decision making by the Supreme Court and those lower courts is judicial harassment of President Trump. And we're having harassment in New York of the president with this bill and the other harassing investigations up there. Uh, it, the, this president has been subjected to abuse like no other in terms of attack on the rule of law uh, that protect typically presidents from uh, be, so that they're able to do their jobs. It's just unbelievable. To me. And of course, the cheerleading from the, the the mainstream media going along with it side by side. It's hard to tell who's who's promoting what. Whether one side is is doing the initiating. Some people think it comes from the media to the Democrats. And they follow suit. But however it goes, it's, it's definitely third world, as you say. Tom, great to see you. Thank you very much.